Hello everyone. Um, today we are having a video on the verb to have in Turkish. And uh, this verb is very important and it is very different because it is used quite differently from other verbs. Uh, in um, Istanbul, Turkish, I mean the Turkish of the Turkey, the country Turkey, this verb um, is um, a quiet, different uh, verb from other verbs. And um, that's why this video is going to take a bit longer than others. Um, so let's go through it before... Yeah, I shouldn't waste your time. Now, here we go. Okay. In this verb, uh, something that you should be aware of is that you're going to use uh, possessive adjectives and suffixes uh, for the word you're using for it. And then you're going to use the verb have. And these suffixes are going to be chosen according to the um, harmony of vowels chart. And this chart you see here is uh, the chart that uh, we obey its rules for the uh, choosing of suffixes. Here we have the sound O, U, O, and U which are called the thick sounds. And here we have O, sorry, we have E, U, E, and E, which are the thin sounds, the thin um, vowels. And we are going to choose the uh, suffixes of any word in harmony of um, these vowels, like if we have um, the sound a or u, we are going to choose the suffix in harmony with that, which is probably um, which probably consists of the sound u mostly. Or if we have the sound o or u at the last syllable of the word, we are going to choose the suffix um, which uh, mostly has the sound. U. And the same happens here. If we have e or u, we are going to choose the suffix which contains u. And if we have e or e, we are going to choose the suffix which has e or e, one of these. Okay. Uh, you see the suffixes of um, possessive um, conditions. Here we have um, im for i, which is ban. In for san, e for uh, o, imiz for sis, uh, inis for uh, sis, and e for onlar. And we have them in four different shapes according to the um, this chart. Of harmony of vowels. Okay, so let's go through it deeper. Diving deep. Okay, here. Uh, we are going to use this suffix im for ban according to the rules of the vowels here um, with some names here which have uh, which we are going to show how this harmony works. And we need them. Um, we need first to make this uh, combination, and then we can add the verb. So, so um, let's have some examples of these uh, words. We have uh, um for the words that have the sound a or u uh at the last syllable. We have im for the Words that have e or e in the last syllable, we have um 
and for the words which have o or u at the last syllable and um for the words which contain ö or ö or u at the last syllable. Okay. Bilgisayarım. Bilgisayarım which means my computer. Yatırımım. Yatırımım which means my investment. Kalemim. Kalemim which means my pen. Birikimim. Birikimim means my savings. Telefonum. Telefonum means my telephone. Sorunum. Sorunum means my problem. Gözüm. Gözüm which means my eye. Üzümüm. Üzümüm which means my grape. Okay, the only reason that I have chosen this word um, is just have an uh, have this uh, harmonious rule um, into practice to just give an example for you. Some examples might be funny, and not related to daily life really, but um, yeah, here what we have here. Okay, so. To say something like I have, well, we have this formula. We have a benim, something, something, im in four different shapes, and the verb var. Var means, and all these, um, I mean, all these combination together means I have something, something. Okay. The verb var here, as you see, means there is or exists. Okay, so var means exists. And we have benim, blah, blah, im var, which means I have. We have benim, something, something, im, var. Benim means for me, and this im suffix brings the meaning of my something something, and var means exists, which means I have something something. Okay. Here we have bilgisayarım. I brought the examples here. We have benim bilgisayarım var. I have a computer. Benim yatırımım var. I have an investment. Benim kalemim var. I have a pencil or pen. They call every pen, marker, crayon, everything kalem. Um, benim birikimim var. Means I have a saving. Benim telefonum var. I have a telephone. Benim sorunum var. I have a problem. Benim gözüm var means I have an eye. This is, um, it can be a kind of metaphor, like I have an eye on something. I want something. It can mean that. Benim üzümüm var means I have grapes. Okay, grapes here is plural verb, but we don't use grapes as plural verb here. We, have it, we use it as a single word in Turkish. Okay, um, and here we have the article an or a here, but we don't need an article here. We can use all these uh, words without an article. We don't need to use beer, uh, which means one. Um, I didn't want to make the structure of the sentence more complicated. I wanted to make it as simple as possible, so I didn't bring any article here, and we don't have to. In Turkish, we don't use much articles. Okay. The next one, here we have benim, and if the word lasts to these vowels, we just bring m, and the suffix is done, and we have var. Okay. So instead of those suffixes that you had seen here in the previous page, um, we just 
add the verb m because of benim. And these vowels must be at the end of, must be the last letter of a word. Okay. And something. Um, we, I couldn't find any word which ends to uh, er sound, but still, I brought it here. But here in the examples, I don't have one. Okay. We have param, means my money. Yardum jum, means my assistant. Teizam, means my aunt. Um, Teize is uh, the sister of your um, mother. Yes, your mother's sister. Okay, because we have another word for father's sister. Uh, bilgim means my information. Pianom means my piano. Sorum means my question. Sorum is question. Sorum, my question. Utum means my iron. Like, you iron your clothes. Okay. Uh... Here, in the sentences, it's going to be Benim param var. I have money. Benim yardımcım var. I have an assistant. Benim teyzem var. I have an aunt. Benim uh, bilgim var. I have information. Benim piyanom var. I have a piano. Benim sorum var. I have a question. Benim ütüm var. I have an iron. Okay, this is the way we say, I have benim, blah, 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 war. Okay, in some words, uh, which end to P, um, when we add the suffix, they turn to B. It is an assimilation situation. And it is literally written in the words. To make it clear, let's go through the examples. We have kitab, which means book. And when the suffix comes, it comes kitabım. So the word P changes to B, actually. Like P, they say, changes to B. Uh, so we have kitab, kitabım, which is my book. Dolap. Dolap means cupboard. And also it means refrigerator. Dolabım, which means my wardrobe. Chorap, which means sock, like the socks you wear. Chorabım means my sock. Jevap, which means answer. Jevabum, my answer. We have hesap, which means the check you are going to pay or the account that you have. So hesabum means my account. Rakip which means rival, rakibim, means my rival. Okay. Uh, yeah, these are enough. And we have the same situation. Oh, and we have another word here, kalb, which means heart. Kalbim means my heart. Okay. We have another example of the same situation here. The words that end to k sound are changed to r sound. They call it yumushak g. Um, it is very, very similar to the uh, sound of r in uh, French. Uh, the way French use uh, the sound R in their language, but it is much more softer in the standard uh, accent of Istanbul. It is much more softer. Okay, let's 
go through the examples. We have chujuk, which means child, or they call boys. Even they call them chujuk. Chujurum means my child. Tabak means plate. Tabarum means my plate. Kashik means spoon. Kashirum means my spoon. Koltuk means armchair. Kolturum means my sofa. Yatak means bed. Yatarım means my bed. Küllük means ashtray. Küllüm means my ashtray. Fıstık means peanut. Fıstığım means my peanut. And sometimes they address girls like fıstık. Okay, something fun to learn. Here we have, okay, we have the same process for the subjective pronoun of san. We have these suffixes um, according to the harmony of vowels, un, in, un, and un. I'm not going to elaborate it as much as I did before. Okay, I hope you understand. Okay, here um, we have the same words, the same examples. Some may change, but um, yes. Okay, bilgisayarın, your computer. Yatırımın, your investment. Kalemin, your pen. Birikimin, your saving. Telefonun, your telephone. Uh, sorunun, your problem. Gözün, your eye. Yüzün, your face. Okay. Uh, let's go through the example. The, let's see how the um, sentence is made. We have senin, blah, blah, in, in four different shapes, and var, which means you have. So this is the sentence that we use it as you have in Turkish. And var means exists, as I said. So we have senin, bişey bişeyin, var, which is senin for you. In means your, and var means exists, for you, something exists. Which means you have. Yeah, this is the um, structure. So let's go through the examples. Okay, I'm not going to make them all. Okay, we have senin bilgisayarın var. You have a computer. Senin yatırımın var. You have an investment. Senin kalemin var. You have a pen. Senin birikimin var. You have a saving. Senin telefonun var. You have a telephone. Senin sorunun var. You have a problem. Senin gözün var. You have an eye. I hope you have two eyes, but anyway. <laughs> okay, senin... Uh, üzümün var means you have a grape or you have grapes. Anyway, yes, let's go. So we had senin. And here, if we have the words who end to these vowels, we're just going to have the sound of n at the end of that word. And we will add var. Like these ones. Paran means your money. Yardımcın means your assistant. Teyzen means your aunt. Bilgin means your information. Piyanon means your piano. Sorun means your question. Ütün means your iron. The device. Okay. 
Let's go through the examples. Senin paran var means you have money. Senin yardımcın var means you have an assistant. Senin teyzen var means you have an aunt. Senin bilgin var means you have information. Senin piyanon var means you have a piano. Senin sorunun var means you have a question. Senin ütün var means you have an iron. Let's go through the words which end to P and they change to B. Here we have kitap. Kitabın means your book. Dolap. Dolabın means your wardrobe. Çorap. Çorabın means your sock. Um, cevap. Cevabın means your answer. Hesap. Hesabın means your account. Rakip, rakibin means your rival. Kalp, kalbin means your heart. Here we have the words which end to k sound and change to g when there is a suffix. Okay. We have çocuk, çocuğun means your child. Tabak, tabağın means your plate. Kaşık, kaşığın means your spoon. Koltuk, koltuğun means your armchair. Yas, sorry, yatak, uh, yatağın means your bed. Küllük, küllüğün means your ashtray. Fıstık, fıstığın means your peanut. Okay, I just wanted to have some words which end to k. Although some may not be used often. Okay, for the next... Um, hold on a second. Okay. Okay, yeah. Let's give some examples like, uh, like senin çocuğun var means you have a child. Senin tabağın var means you have a plate. Senin kaşığın var means you have a spoon. Senin koltuğun var means you have an armchair. Yatağın var. Senin yatağın var means you have a bed. Senin küllüğün var means that you have an ashtray. Senin fıstığın var means you have some peanut. Okay. For the um, subjective pronoun of o, şu, or bu, which means he, she, it. And this means it. And um, we will have only the suffix of a uh, in four different shapes according to the harmony of vowels uh, here we have bilgisayarı means his computer but well, i'm not going to say his it's her it's for all of it i choose his so um i hope you understand okay so here we have yatırımı means his investment uh, kalemi means his pen, birikimi means his saving, telefonu means his telephone, sorunu means his problem, gözü means his eye, üzümü means his grape. Fine. Okay. Let's go through the structure. We have onun, something something e in four different shapes, var. And this means he, she, or it has. Var means exists. We have onun, bir şey, bir şey, something, something, var. Onun means for him. E means his or her or its. And var means exists. All of these means he has or she has or it has. Okay. Uh, yes. Here we have onun bilgisayarı var means he has a computer. Onun yatırımı var means he has an investment. Onun kalemi var means he, she has a pen or he has a pen. Onun birikimi var means he has savings. Um, onun telefonu var means he has a telephone. Onun, um, was that, sorunu var, he has a problem. Onun gözü var, he has an eye. Um, onun üzümü var, means he has grapes. 
Okay. Uh, we have onun plus the words that come with the vowels at the end, and we have this c. Why do we have c? Because the suffix that is used for the third singular uh, subjective pronoun here is only a vowel. So if we add this vowel beside these vowels, we need a consonant to make it easy for us to pronounce. So, and we have var at the end of the sentence. According to this, we are going to have isi, ısı, ası, osu, usu, üsü, and ösü, which is these red ones belong to the original word. And if the suffix comes, it is going to be like this. Let's go through the examples to understand it better. Here we have parası means his money. Yardımcısı means his assistant. Teyzesi means uh, his aunt. Bilgisi means his information. Piyanosu means his piano. Sorusu means his question. Ütüsü means his iron. You see all these words are ending to, uh, have been ended to. Oy, these words end to these vowels. And uh, we have these suffixes according to the harmony of vowels. The sentences we have onun parası var means he has money. Onun yardımcısı var means he has assistant. Onun teyzesi var means he has an aunt. Onun bilgisi var means he has information. Or he has been informed, something like that. Okay, onun um, pianosu var means he has a piano. Onun sorunu var means he has a question. Onun ütüsü var means he has an iron. Okay, here we have the words which um, change from P to B at the end. We have kitab, kitabı means his book. Dolap dolabı means his wardrobe. Çorap çorabı means his socks. Cevap cevabı means his answer. Ay, pardon. Uh, hesap hesabı means his account. Rakip rakibi means his rival. And kalp kalbi means his heart or her heart. All of them may mean like her as well. Okay. The ones which change from k to g um, are going to be like çocuk çocuğu, like his child. Um, tabak tabağı, his plate. Kaşık kaşığı means his spoon. Koltuk koltuğu means his armchair. Yatak yatağı means his bed. Küllük küllüğü means his ashtray. Fıstık fıstığı means his peanut. Okay. Yes, here we have the subjective pronoun of biz. We are going to add the suffix according to the vowels here. For O and U we have umus. For A and E we have imis. For O and U we have umus. For U and U we have umus. So, we have bilgisayarımız means our computer. Yatırımımız means our investment. Yatırımımız. And the words are getting longer, guys. Okay, kalemimiz, our pen. Birikimimiz means our savings. Telefonumuz means our telephone. Sorunumuz means our problem. Yüzümüz means our eye. Sorry, gözümüz means our eye. Yüzümüz means our face. Okay. Uh, so the sentence is going to be like bizim. 
bir şey bir şeyimiz in four different shapes as you saw var which means we have as you know var means exist so we have bizim bir şeyimiz var means for us our something exist all of them means we have so we have bizim bilgisayarımız var we have a computer bizim yatırımımız var we have an investment bizim kalemimiz var we have a pencil bizim birikimimiz var we have savings bizim telefonumuz var we have a telephone bizim sorunumuz var we have a problem bizim gözümüz var we have eyes bizim yüzümüz var sorry üzümümüz var Did i make it grape okay means we have grapes okay here we have bizim plus the words that end to the vowels and if it is so we have miz in different forms okay yeah uh and we have war at the end of the sentence here it is here we go paramız means our money Yardımcımız means our assistant, teyzemiz means our aunt, bilgimiz means our information, piyanomuz means our piano, sorumuz means our question, ütümüz means our iron. And the sentences are, bizim paramız var. We have money. Bizim yardımcımız var. We have assistant. We um, bizim teyzemiz var. We have an aunt. Bizim bilgimiz var. We have information. We have the information, let's say. Um, bizim piyanomuz var. We have a piano. Bizim sorunumuz var. Sorry, we have soru. Bizim sorumuz var means we have a question. Bizim ütümüz var. We have and iron okay let's go through those verbs who end with which end to p and change to b here we go kitap kitabımız our book dolap dolabımız our wardrobe çorap çorabımız our sock cevap cevabımız our answer hesap hesabımız our account Rakip rakibimiz, our rival. Kalp kalbimiz, our heart. And you know, you put bizim kitabımız var, bizim dolabımız var, bizim çorabımız var, bizim cevabımız var, bizim hesabımız var, bizim rakibimiz var, bizim kalbimiz var. This is the way you make sentence. And here we come to the words which end to k. Çocuk çocuğumuz our child. Tabak tabağımız our plate. Kaşık kaşığımız our spoon. Koltuk koltuğumuz our armchair. Yatak yatağımız our bed. Küllü küllüğümüz our ashtray. Fıstık fıstığımız our peanut. Oh yeah. And here like we say bizim çocuğumuz var. We have a child. Bizim tabağımız var. We have a plate. Bizim kaşığımız var. We have a spoon. Bizim kol koltuğumuz var means we have an armchair. We have ya um, we have yatak. <laughs> oh my god. Um, bizim yatağımız var. We have a bed. Bizim küllüğümüz var. We have an ashtray. Uh, bizim fıstığımız var. We have a peanut. Okay. Yes. Now we are going through the subject pronoun of sis. We have the suffixes of iniz, sorry, unuz, iniz, unuz, and unuz for these vowels that you see. So we have bilgisayarınız means your computer, and this is the plural form. It is we. Your com, yeah, your computer, 
We? No, this is you. Sorry. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I got tired. Okay, bilgisayarınız, your computer. Yatırımınız means your investment. Kaleminiz means your pen. Birikiminiz means your savings. Telefonunuz means your telefon. Sorununuz means your problem. Gözünüz means your eye. Yüzünüz means your face. Okay. We go through the structure. We have sizin, bir şey bir şeyiniz in different forms. Var. All means you have. And also, we have sizlerin. Sometimes we have a plural form of, plural form of you. That's the plural of plural. So we sometimes have um, sizler, sizlerin. Uh, with something, the suffix e var. So we have two different structures here. Both of them means you have. And if we say sizin, we add the suffix isiniz. If we have sizlerin, we have the suffix e here. I hope you understand. Okay. Sizin bilgisayarınız var means you have a computer. Sizin yatırımınız var means you have an investment. Sizin kaleminiz var means you have a pen. Sizin birikiminiz var means you have savings. Sizin telefonunuz var means you have a telephone. Sizin sorununuz var means you have a problem. Sizin gözünüz var means you have an eye. Sizin üzümünüz var means you have grapes. Okay. And if we have the, uh, the sizlerin, we are going to have these sentences in this shape. Like sizlerin bilgisayarı var. The same meaning you have, a com you have computers. Or all of you have one computer. I mean, yeah. Okay. Sizlerin yatırımı var means you have investments. Oh my God. <laughs> Sizlerin kalemi var, you have a pen. Sorry with those uh, the small English uh, mistakes sometimes. It was a bit challenging to... Um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Sizlerin birikimi var, you have savings. Sizlerin telefonu var, means you have a telephone. Uh, sizlerin sorunu var, means you have a problem. Sizlerin gözü var, means you have an eye. Sizlerin üzümü var means we, you have grapes. Next. Okay, so we have sizin with all the words that into the vowels. And we have niz this time. And the word var. And sizlerin, the same vowels. And we have si this time. And we have the verb var. Oh my god. So, we are going to have, for the ones that uh, are ended to C, because you know the suffix was e, uh, and because it came to it came beside the vowels, we have the consonants uh, here to uh, make it easier to be pronounceable, kind of. So we have isi, ısı, ası, osu, usu, üsü, and ösü. If the word is ended to these vowels, which I've Made them red here. Okay. Sizin paranız, your money. Sizin yardımcınız means your assistant. Sizin uh, teyzeniz means your aunt. Sizin bilginiz means your information. Sizin bir piyanonuz means your piano. Sizin sorununuz means your question. Sizin ütünüz means your iron. So we have sizin paranız var, you have money. Sizin yardımcınız var, you have an assistant. Sizin teyzeniz var, you have an aunt. 
Sizin bilginiz var. You have the information. Sizin piyanonuz var. Means you have a piano. Sizin sorunuz var. Means you have a question. Sizin ütünüz var. Means you have an iron. Okay, let's go. Then we have... Sizlerin parası, your money. Sizlerin yardımcısı, means your assistant. Sizlerin teyzesi, means your aunt. Sizlerin bilgisi, means your information. Sizlerin piyanosu, means your piano. Sizlerin sorusu, means your question. Sizlerin um, ütüsü, means your iron. Oh my... And this is the uh, in case that these words are singly, singular. Okay, if they are not plural, this is the situation. You see these words here. If they are plural, it's um, another shape. Uh, yeah. Okay, next. We have the words which end to P and change to B. We have kitab, kitabınız, your book, dolap, dolabınız, uh, your wardrobe, çorap, çorabınız, your sock, cevap, cevabınız, your answer, uh, hesap, hesabınız, your account, rakip, rakibiniz, your rival, kalp, kalbiniz, your heart. Like we say, uh, sizin kitabınız var, sizin dolabınız var. Sizin çorabınız var, sizin cevabınız var, sizin hesabınız var, sizin rakibiniz var, and sizin kalbiniz var. And we have çocuk çocuğunuz, your child, tabak tabağınız, your... Um, your plate, kaşık... Kaşığınız, your spoon. Koltuk, koltuğunuz, your armchair. Yatak, yatağınız, your bed. Küllük, küllüğünüz, your ashtray. Fıstık, fıstığınız, your peanut. Okay, now that we come to the suffix. Okay, let me make sentence for these ones. Um, sizin çocuğunuz var, sizin tabağınız var, sizin kaşığınız var, sizin koltuğunuz var, sizin yatağınız var, sizin küllüğünüz var, sizin fıstığınız var. Okay, here we have the um, subjective pronoun of onlar, which means they. We have the suffix of ı in different forms, the same as the suffix that we had in uh, uh, singular third person. We have it here, and I decided to choose the words in plural form because they usually use it like that when they have the um, subjective pronouns of onlar. Uh, let's go through them. We have bilgisayarları, means their computers, yatırımları, their investments, kalemleri, their pens, birikimleri, their savings, telefonları, their telephones. Sorunları, their problems. Sorun means problem. Okay. Um, gözleri, their eyes. Uh, üzümleri, this must be leri. Let me fix it. Okay. Okay. No problem. No problem. No problem. Okay, üzümleri means their grapes. Um, let's go through the ones that here we had, if we have something plural for the word, and here we go through um, as if they have something sing, they have only one thing. So we have bilgisayarı, his which means his computer, yatırımı, his investment, kalemi, his pen, birikimi, his saving, telefonu, his telefon, sorunu, his problem, gözü, his eye, and üzümü, his grape. Okay, 
I know that I have written this telephone wrong here, but anyway, it um, because of the mutual words we have in the same language. Sorry for mis um, misspelling. Sometimes it happens. Okay. Imagine that this is written correctly. Okay. Onların uh, bir şey bir şeyi var, which means they have. Like, onların bilgisayarı var, onların yatırımı var. They have a computer, they have an investment. Onların kalemi var, they have a pencil. Onların birikimi var, they have a saving. Onların telefonu var, they have a telephone. Onların sorunu var, they have a problem. Onların gözü var, they have an eye. Onların üzümü var, they have grapes. And... We may have the same sentences with the plural form, like onların bilgisayarları var. They have computers. And um, we can have the plural form here as well. It depends on the situation. Okay, we have onların plus the words that end to the vowels. And we have the C suffix and var. So... Again, we have isi, ısı, ası, osu, usu, üsü, ösü. Onların parası, means their money. Onların yardımcısı, means their assistant. Onların teyzesi, means their aunt. Onların bilgisi, their information. Onların piyanosu, means their piano. Onların sorusu, their question. God. This is wrong. I'm going to fix this. But we have an auto correction. Okay. Uh, onların sorusu their question. Onların ütüsü their iron. Onların parası var. They have money. Onların yardımcısı var. They have an assistant. Onların teyzesi var. They have an aunt. Onların bilgisi var, they have information. Onların piyanosu var, they have a piano. Onların sorusu var, they have a problem. Onların ütüsü var, they have an iron. And we have these words. Okay. Onların kitabı, their book. Onların dolabı, their wardrobe. Onların çorabı, their sock. Onların... Um, cevabı their answer onların hesabı their account onların rakibi their rival onların uh, kalbi their uh, heart and we can have them have them in plural and if we have them in plural we don't change them so it is going to be kitapları with p dolapları Çorapları. Yeah, we don't change to p if we add them in plural. Okay. Onların çocuğu, their child. Onların tabağı, their plate. Onların kaşığı, their spoon. Onların koltuğu, their armchair. Onların yatağı, their bed. Onların küllüğü, their ashtray. Onların fıstığı, their peanut. Yes. And the negative form of this verb is only replaced with another word, which is yok. So you saw all the structures of the verb var. Uh, you can replace it with yok. And it change, the meaning changes from there is to there isn't or it doesn't exist. I brought some examples here, like onların çocuğu yok. They don't have a child. Onların telefonu yok. They don't have a telephone. Sizin bilginiz yok. You don't have information. Bizim bilgisayarımız yok. We don't have a computer. Sorry, this is we. We okay. 
We don't have a computer. Sizin, sorry, senin sorun, senin sorun yok. You don't have a question. Benim sorunum yok. You don't have a problem. Okay, onun ütüsü yok. It hasn't been ironed, it means. Okay, it hasn't been ironed. Okay, var mı means is there. Like you go and ask or for the second time you emphasize it if something. If they have something or don't have something, you say, is there? Var mı? Senin paran var mı? Means, do you have money? So, var mı means do and have. I mean, this question. But only var mı means is there. But when we have with it all these um, structure things, it means, do you have money? Yok mu means isn't there. And if we have it in a sentence, like senin paran yok mu means don't you have money. Okay? Yes. You can replace all the sentences with var here with yok to make it negative. The only thing that you do, you change var to yok. And these structures are the same. Okay. Here we came to the end of the video. Guys. I hope you like this video. I hope if you like, you show that you like it by pressing the like. It's up to you to subscribe. See you next video. Good luck.